To forgive is the choice that I make. The apology is the choice of the, of the other. But if forgiveness is an expression of, of love, then I, I would want to say that forgiveness does not depend upon the apology of the other. If he apologizes or not to me, it doesn't make a big difference. Yes, it makes a difference that, saying that he admitted it wrong and he's sorry for that, which is good for him. For me, he hurt me, so if he apologizes, it's good for him. If he doesn't, let him go. We give forgiveness unconditionally. And we give forgiveness unconditionally because that's what God does. God forgives without waiting for us to repent. That's what believe, we be, Christians believe happened on the cross of Christ. Uh, God acted on our behalf to forgive our sins. And hence for us, forgiveness is not predicated on somebody else's apology that happens before we forgive. But it's also not possible, I believe, for forgiveness to come to its full completion, to come to its fruition without apology. In the Jewish tradition, the victim is not obligated to forgive. The one who has perpetrated an injury on the other is obligated to make amends. There are traditions that clearly espouse that, in fact, it's, it's a flaw in the other if they cannot forgive. In the Jewish tradition, to forgive is a wonderful thing, but that's not the obligation. I mean, after all, who are we to say what is necessary for a person who's been victimized or hurt or injured or beaten or robbed or witnessed a murder? Who are we to somehow hold them, be judgmental of them if they can't forgive the other? And while we have an ideal of forgiveness, the obligation in the Jewish tradition is on the one who might have wronged the other. Power relationships come into play. You know? So um, Pope John Paul II was the Roman pontiff, and you know, uh, this was the man who shot him was someone with you know, certainly not as much power. Um, so sometimes I think uh, down the power relationship, it can be easier to forgive without apology or it can be easier to forgive sooner. But when you're talking about a situation of ongoing victimization, say in a marriage or in a situation of sexual violence where the power dynamic is very different, um, I think it's not, it's not wise to forgive soon <laughs> and before uh, justice or any possibility of restitution or at least establishment of safety. Um, so I think there are ways in, in which we can say forgiveness shouldn't come too soon. I think there's different levels of forgiveness. There's the level of removing the bitterness from one's heart, and there's the level of reestablishing the relationship. Reestablishing relationship involves trust. You can't trust a person, and you can't really go the whole way. But you can remove the bitterness from your heart. Forgiveness is a pro process that goes through you, and sometimes Yes, it needs the person to say, I have been a perpetrator. If the other uh, who creates some problem to you, uh, and for the moment remain a little bit distant, <laughs> then once you see they uh, apologize, but then, uh, yes, uh, I have no longer any sort of uh, wrong feeling or negative feeling. Then that's, I think, normal way. That's all good. Apology would be the beginning of the practice there. And I think uh, apology is a very difficult practice to, to, for us to admit we're wrong and to apologize. Apology is one of the sources that give uh, acceptance, that give the right to that man who give this uh, opportunity to the criminal uh, to forgive him. So somebody's got to take, take root and say, well, you know, I have to forgive. Because that's the only way that this, this thing could come to an end. When Peter asked Jesus, 
How long should I forgive someone who has offended me? Is it seven times? Jesus replied, not seven times, but seventy times seven. That is, you should be ready to forgive always. So forgiveness should not be conditional. And normally in Judaism we see forgiveness as something associated with atonement, remorse, apology. But Maimonides, our greatest sage of the Middle Ages, rules that if the other person does not apologize, you are still free to forgive, and you should. And I agree with him because harboring a grudge or a resentment is a terrible weight to carry around with you. And you have to travel light in this world. We have too few energies to waste them on being unforgiving. The person who is seeking forgiveness, whether it's from God or from another person, needs to recognize that uh, the, the, per the, the action is something destructive and harmful. And I think the way sin is spoken about in the Roman Catholic tradition is that it's something that breaks relationship with God and breaks relationship among human beings and community. Um, and I certainly, you know, sort of from a contemporary perspective would say, you know, it, it, uh, it destroys the person individually as well, so in community and individually in relationship with God. And, and uh, you know, uh, someone can forgive me, but I can't receive the benefits of that really unless it's something I can, you know, internalize as something I need and something I, I, um, I need because of what I've done. You can certainly forgive a person without them having apologized, but it's, that's not the complete process. Uh, and in, in that way, we feel that the, the person who, who needs to apologize and hasn't, really hasn't learned what he or she has to learn. Like Jesus, forgive without people make something. He died on the cross and he said, okay, you, Father, forgive, forgive all the humanity. So we, we are also invited to, to do the same thing, to, to forgive even if we have an, any answer on the other, other side. But it is also true that I cannot go to God and beg uh, the pardon of my sins if I'm not ready to, to forgive the, the, the brother, my brothers. To require an apology from him to be able to forgive would mean that I put myself on a higher pedestal and said, you did it, come, now, kneel down, bow down, say apology, uh, say a word of apology. I don't need to ask for it. The law of karma, which we talk about in Hindu religion, which Buddhism also has borrowed from Hinduism, there's a law of cause and effect, and he will get whatever he deserves to get by a certain cosmic law. I don't have to interfere in that law and demand an apology from him. Either way, you are satisfied.